Okay, I guess we start. 628. Call the meeting to order. And do we have additions to the agenda? I see that we do. Yes, I will brief you all on an increase in the attempt to access town funds by unscrupulous individuals. Well, okay. So we'll put that in somewhere. Yep. All right. Um, review of minutes, March 20th. Has anyone read them? I did. One thing on the select board organization on page one is um, I, I think, thank you for noting that Mr. Etnayer recused himself from the vote for the vice chair. I think it's worth noting that Mr. Gardner recused himself from the vote for the chair. Thank you, Dara. Absolutely. I've got your back, Seth. Oh, you, I feel, I feel like Carl. <laughs> you were very close to being dethroned. <laughs> I, I just have on page two uh, conversations. I can't with hear you. Conversations with the state police. Um, uh, here, just a little thing is, is uh, Mr. Jewett asked if there would be any issues with if the town. Uh, just, just. Start the engine. It, it, yes. Thank you. Yep. Any other corrections or notations? I'll make a motion that we. Um, except the uh, the minutes from March 20th, 2023 select board meeting uh, with the noted changes. Uh, Is second. anyone going to make a second? Yeah, Carl did. Oh, Carl made the second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Um, so the next public comment. Do we have any public? I do not see any. I do not hear any. Okay. So, the next item on the agenda is a conversation with Washington County Sheriff, Mark Poulin. Um, please step up, Mr. Poulin. So there's actually two of us here this evening. So we've got a mic close to Carl and a mic here. So I don't know, Brett, if you want to come here. Wait, yes. wait, 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 wait. Okay. How's that? Oh, you're all set? Oh, yeah, that's true. Let's slide down. They both sit here. <coughs> and, we put that, there. and we put that here, then <laughs> hopefully a uh, chair partner can... <laughs> So, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Mark Poulin. I'm the Washington County Sheriff. I don't know if I've met any of you. I recognize faces, but as far as meeting, I don't know if that's ever happened or not. So, nice to meet you all anyways. Um, with me is Captain Brett Meyer. Um, he is the Patrol Division Supervisor for the Department. So, he will be doing much of the speaking this evening as it is his department to speak for. So, when it comes <laughs> to the patrol activities. May I suggest, since you point out, we don't have a, a prior relationship that we just go around and introduce ourselves. Please. Because so, we don't even have cards in front of us. <laughs> yeah? I'm uh, John Jewett, and I'm on the select board, and I live here in East Montpelier. I'm Carl Etnayer. I'm on the select board and live here in East Montpelier. Scott Hess, uh, select board member. I have to live here or I wouldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Deirdre Connolly. I take uh, the meeting minutes. I'm Gina Jenkins. I'm, the town, I'm the town administrator. I do also live in East Montpelier, even though I don't, I don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jim. I'm Seth Gardner, uh, <coughs> of the East Montpelier Select Board. Okay. So we're ready. So I ha I've only been given a cursory information about this evening that you're interested in contracting with the Sheriff's Department for some patrol activity. So Brett can give you the, the summer, uh, summarization of our services the best. So at this point, Captain, would you go for it, please? Okay. I know many, many, many years ago, we did have a contract. I want to say at this point, it's probably about 20 years ago because I was only here a short time. Um, I started here uh, for the Sheriff's Department in 92 part-time when I was working Waterbury full-time and switched over here in 96. We did probably, I want to say, 
six, eight years before whatever reasons at that point in time it, uh, we parted. So it was quite a period of time. And then I remember we came back in and did a presentation where we were going to be working along with the state police and that ended up not happening either. Um, but anyways, generally our patrol programs are mostly motor vehicle enforcement, but we are in fact first responders. So if in fact there's a, a major situation going on, well, we're on patrol in the town and or one of the neighboring towns, we're going to be a first responder to that call. So we, in fact, do those enforcements. We generally do, I know in the past here, it was like three-hour blocks. I'm not really sure what you're looking for at this point in time. I guess that's something for definitely for discussion. Um, but we generally do three-hour blocks in the uh, either morning hours or late afternoon hours when the commuter's traffic time is. I can tell you, um, depending on what your thoughts are, we're not seeing that all the way around. We're even finding middle of the day is, is a big problem with speed now. Um, Woodbury, for instance, is one of those that uh, they did the tapes, which I love the tapes, the speed tapes. If uh, you guys have access to the Regional Planning Commission to get those put out on different roads, they tell me exactly what's going on. You're going to have your residents who can see things going on and and a lot of times their information is true, either it's, it's a big truck and that big truck sounds loud, so it's got to be speeding, and it's not, <laughs> but you know we're there. Um, these tapes do wonders, because I generally what I do is I ask you to send me a copy of, of what you get for statistics, and I go through those statistics and actually look at the speeds, the times are happening, and organize patrols around the times that those are happening. And you know if there's one at midnight that's going through it, Whatever speed, am I going to schedule somebody at midnight? Probably not. I'll just say that, and unless we have issues. I will say if we're doing highway safety details, which we do as well, and I know that's going on, there might be a good chance we might be out for, for that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's generally how we organize our, our scheduling. Um, right now, we presently have, what, six full-timers on? And, six, yes. Um, yeah, six full-timers on, and generally there's four to five of us that are doing enforcement. We are trying to hire one more full-time patrolman. Uh, we have one full-time patrolman now. We're looking to do one more. That will kind of settle us in pretty well to be able to cover the different towns that we have. At the present time, if we were to take you guys on, that would make 11 towns out of, I think it's 14. Out of the 14. Yeah, so. You've been in Woodbury a long time. We have been yeah. in Woodbury for quite some time, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the longest contracts that I know over the Waitsfield Warren contracts, which actually were in place before I started in 92. Wow. So I used to hear about hear them doing enforcement when I was working in Waterbury. And I started there in 89. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so how does the uh, contract work? I mean, say we contracted for 20 hours a month. Would that be a guarantee to 20 hours a month? Or how does that, how does that work? You want to answer that one? Well, answer. At the, at the present time, I don't want to make any promises. I'll be open with you. It would have to be dealing with staffing. Like we said, we want to get one more full-time patrolman on. Um, we can kind of guarantee a day a week, maybe possibly two days a week, and be able to build up from there once we get another full-time person on. So a day is how many hours? Well, that, that's, again, up to, up to you. I know in the past we generally did three hours out here at okay. different, different yeah. uh, days of the week. But again, that would be up yeah. to, to discussion tonight. A lot of it is you need to tell us what you want, and we will work around that to, to come up what the, the two of us can both arrange between our prior commitments and what you're looking for. Okay. It might take a little while hey, to get into a, into a schedule or into a process. Yeah. One of the things, I, and I, I'm sure Mark's going to get into, is we've kind of did a rate structure change, uh, effective July 1st, and a lot of the different towns... Some are still contracting for the same amount. Others are reshifting what they're doing for their scheduling. That's going to open up a lot of things for us. Um, perfect example, the Valley, who increased their budget based off of what the, the rates are, are also organizing their time a little differently. So that, that's going to give us that person to be able to generate out to different areas. So again, like I said, we can definitely if we can grab one more full-timer, we're going to be really set on that end of things. Um, so yeah. That's kind of where we're at at this point in time. I, I don't want to promise you anything, only because yeah. it, depending on what goes on depends on what I have available at the time. Yeah. Could you explain the system that you use for 
uh, for deputies coming and fulfilling the contract on, on your end. Uh, we, we understood from Vermont State Police that uh, they fulfill the contract that they ha have had with us with non-mandatory overtime. So uh, they don't have anybody there who can say to a trooper, uh, okay, this week you're going out to East Montpelier. It's strictly voluntary on, on uh, the basis of each individual trooper. I generally, I generally set the schedule okay. at the beginning of the month. Like I can tell you my Sunday morning was doing the schedule for the month. Because I wasn't able to get caught up. We had a busy week last week. Mm -hmm. And Sunday morning, I was doing the schedule for the month for the guys. Okay. So yeah. s some of the stuff is done by part-time staff. They send us our availability, and we plug them in whenever they're available. Mm -hmm. On the majority of our patrol work is done by the full-time staff, so it is just part of their daily schedule. Okay. So, so you might not, even... It's, it's not overtime. It is not. No, it not. is okay. their daily job. Okay. Thanks. So, so the contract means that you actually will try to fulfill those hours by telling people to go do the work. Barring someone Barring gets Andy's gets sick or gets injured or something like that, you know, things that are out of our control occasionally upset the apple yeah. cart. But for the most part, we schedule people as just part of their work week so they will be here. Yeah, according to the needs of the town, according to the contract. Correct. That's right. Hours. Yeah, okay. So we try to be as flexible as we can um, you know, we're, we're a small department. We're challenged with, with uh, employees like anyone. So every now and then we have something that comes up last minute and we need to pull someone, but we avoid that whenever possible. Yeah. So having, if we get that one more person, it'll stop a lot of that from happening. So. Right. And then um, you would take direction from the select board or the town administrator on various spots in town that might need some patrolling or enforcement like we usually try you know, to speeding up, and stuff like that we try to set up a point of contact somebody from in the town whoever that person is going to be to be in direct contact with the patrol supervisor which is yeah. captain meyer and that way you have that close yeah. relationship when a complaint comes in it goes straight to him he pushes it out to the staff and then we deal with it from there okay that, that tends to work fairly well we've had situations where we've had multiple phone calls it just doesn't work out because we end up with a, a dozen different complaints and tends to be they're all for the same situation <laughs> where yeah. I, I hate to say it's better. You guys can deal with the situation. We're looking, obviously, if we're getting complaints, is it a particular person that we're dealing with, particular vehicle, I should say, date and time that's happening or specific day that's happening, I should say, and the time it's happening. So, again, I can schedule things accordingly. And, and again, we can work on our scheduling based off of what the complaints are as well. So if you got complaints at three o'clock in the afternoon, I don't want to schedule somebody at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, right. I mean, as long as we have communication about the spots right. in town that need something and that, and that you have the ability to not always guarantee someone to be there, but at least, you know, make an effort to get personnel in the spots that we need them. Because that's, that's been kind of lacking in our relationship with the state police. There's been months they've done zero hours for us. And that just doesn't really fulfill some of the needs that we have. And not that we have a lot of needs, but we do have complaints about speeding in various you know, areas of the town. It would be nice to answer those complaints with some um, enforcement. In the coming months, you're going to have a lot of those complaints. So every time of the year. One other thing we try to provide for the towns is when we have these contracts, or even sometimes when we don't, um, myself, the captain, and our sergeant are all state employees. So occasionally when a complaint comes in, we'll come out and just do it on you know state time, on our own time, just to try to help out. Yeah. You know, we don't guarantee that at any time, but we... We try to get out here as much yeah. as possible. So. I, I'm going to say, and I remember we addressed the situation at your uh, at your elementary school here back mm -hmm. last fall, was it? Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> um, which was a situation that unfortunately wasn't able to be dealt with by someone else. So we're able to come up and deal with the situation. I do remember there was some different issues. And one of the things I'll, I will bring up is we definitely are big on proper signage and having the signs up that need to be put up, et cetera, on the roads. Because I don't want to be out writing a ticket that's never going to hold up in court. Yeah. I'll just want you to know that right. up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So how, how often over the last, I don't know, six months or a year, have you come to East Montpelier on what you call state time? Well, the state time is 
kind of spotty. It depends on the nature of complaints. We're out here sure. frequently on grant time, which is highway safety money. Okay. So that can be for um, occupant protection, uh, distracted driver, DUI programs. A lot of times when you see us doing car stops out here, it's been on those grant programs. Okay. So. How often have you done that over the last six Fair amount. <laughs> Fair amount, yes. Okay. Hours off the top of our head. In this area, quite tell. often. Okay. It's, it's frequent for us to make our way out through this way, stopping cars through here, getting into playing field out through that way, and, and segregating the different areas. One of the things that I'm also in charge of is the highway safety programs. The old program called Clicker Tickets, now called Buckled Up, I basically run that program for the county. So we basically designate where we're going to work in given days, and generally what we have usually is, is five to six cruisers in areas, and one of those, is, I'll be open with you, is, is East Montpelier, that we work in general area. So it would be like East Montpelier, Callis, and, and Woodbury would be that day, and we would have that number of cars in the area for the day working. Would that be more or less than once a month? Say, yeah. Well, that's, that's a, a set thing that happens in May. Okay. That's so just something we do. As far as the other, the DUI and the distracted driving, those things, it generally it's, it's about hit or miss once a month. I'll, I'll put together a highway safety detail. Yep. Um, it all depends on what we got going on because yep. there's different set times that we're supposed to work yes. by way of the contracts. Right. So one of the things that I work off from and where I designate where people are going to be has to do with what the crash problems are. Mm -hmm. If there's high crash ratings in a given area, we work that area heavily. So. Data-driven is, is the yes. basis for everything we do these days. That's yeah. what the feds expect. That's what yeah. the state expects. So, yeah, yeah you, you go where the problems are proven to be, not where you think yeah. they are. And as we said, by time of the day and the day of the week, again, it's data-driven, but it gives it works. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, uh, I, I like the data-driven yeah. approach, and uh, I realize that you know, we don't have the data from the tapes to, <laughs> to give to you. I, I like your real proactively saying that would be helpful. But based on, on what you've observed in town over yep. the time that you've been working here, wh where are the hot spots that you think uh, your presence I would be sure most helpful? You, I am sure you still have a hot spot on Town Hill Road. Yeah. <laughs> that never changes. It, it's always been a hot spot. Yeah. Um, Route 2 out here is still is a hot spot. You guys just had a major crash recently out here. Um, I know the state police just did it. They did one of their coordinated details out here two weekends ago, and it was nonstop. Again, it, it was high speeds, and that was on the weekend. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as designated, designated areas where we would work, I can tell you one of the places I would be putting more attention to would be Vincent Flats. Um, school means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't looked up there, and it's something I actually need to look at. One of the big changes that people may not know about, if you designate a school zone and sign it properly, it's double the fines. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is put an ordinance in place. It makes a big difference. It, it, right, it makes a big difference, makes a big difference to people's <coughs> mindset when they start dealing with those type of things. Um, again, one of the things we do is we use Facebook to uh, put out information. We don't put people's names out there unless it's an arrest, but uh, other than that, we put out information based off of what we're doing and that gives kind of an insight that uh, they're, this is serious. And like I said, that school zone area up in there, that's serious. Uh, I know when we're having the problems up there, I actually spent a few days up there just myself setting up there uh, dealing with things. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And, the, and, the, and the, the cost for this, um, I don't remember what we were paying for the state police, but. I can't have to negotiate that, and we can't negotiate it now. But. <laughs> so I can't answer that question, what you're paying state police. So we have two models set up. Um, we are changing our billing structure due to, to many different reasons. The current rate between now and July 1st for all the other towns is currently at 3125 After July 1st, it's going to 60 per hour plus mileage, which is the standard federal rate for mileage. Um, the reason for the, for the large increase was... Um, we sat down with, with our accountant and ran numbers. And long story short, we were using money generated from other contracts to supplement the patrol contracts. We were actually losing money on the patrol contracts, which uh, we don't have the staff to keep that kind of supplementary process going. So the, the cost of the program has to cover itself. Um, we're getting different computers for the cars. We've had to update a lot of our equipment. Body cameras are a thing now as of last week. Um, they're incredibly <laughs> expensive. And modern policing is expensive. And so uh, as much as uh, the previous sheriff liked to look at it as a service provided, um, unfortunately, we are a business and we have to, every every program has to pull its own weight. So. And 
just to clarify. So it's sixty dollars an hour. Sixty dollars an hour plus mileage, yes. And and that rate is and the same regardless of who the officer is. Sorry, sorry, sir. That is that is the same across the board. Yes. Right. And the way the state police contract works, I think some of the fine percentage of the fines went back to the town. Is that the same way? A anything that's covered by an ordinance that's in place, be it for speed, be it for stop signs, whatever the ordinances cover, um, the towns, when a violation is, is written, get a certain percentage of that money back from the state. Yeah. So that same process would continue. What that percentage, do you know off the top of your head? I, it's a calculation. I'm not even going to yeah. guess. This is a, like Vermont Ticket Bureau. Yeah, from my judicial bureau. That's correct. So I will I will hit on that a little bit. Back in 2016, um, one of the things that legislature did for us was put in place for us a couple different things. One was gives us the ability to deal with points, depending on how many violations and moving violations, et cetera. The other thing they did is wanting us to work with people on fines. So it's not uncommon for us to generally go into a traffic hearing and be asked whether or not we want to sit and talk to people and try to work out things before a hearing. That's the new way. So it's very common for us to work with people and deal with things so you're not having to pay for a traffic hearing. You know, pay for us guys having to go it's to the traffic hearing. It, it is. Traffic it, is tickets, it is the way yes. the world is gone, unfortunately. <laughs> and basically, legislature was the one that did it. And they push you to do it. How, how do you decide when you pull somebody over whether to issue a ticket which would result in revenue or just issue a, a warning? First first of all, we don't do enforcement for money to make you money. I'll be open up front for you. We do highway safety. That's what we are doing. Yeah. So depending on what the circumstances depends on what we do. How egregious it is. Correct. Correct. It's the, the totality yeah. of the circumstances that the yeah. term we use. You have to look at the big picture. What yeah. was all involved? Yeah. You know, we, we tell everybody, don't go and put money into a contract based off of what you get back and find money. Yep. We and tell everybody that right. because that's not what we're doing. We're out there for highway safety. Yep. We don't want the bad crashes out here. We are trying to do the safety part of things to make it so you don't have people dying on the roads. Thank, thank you for yep. saying that. When Seth and I were on the select board when we first started the current con or set of contracts with the uh, Vermont State Police, then we were very clear as a select board about yep. Our intention. We we expected that uh, we get some money back. We did not expect it to cover the expense of the contract, and we were just fine with that yep. because it would improve safety. Excellent. So. Okay, so I think we just have to figure out what you know. Is the rest of the select board interested in pursuing this further with the Washington County Sheriff's Department, or what do you, what are you all what are you all thinking? I, I am. I have a bunch of other questions, uh, but I don't have to take them in, in this meeting. We could uh, we could handle them outside of the meeting, Seth. I, uh, I know you like to keep the meetings going relatively according to the schedule. But we still have nine minutes left until we get to the next item. Okay. But but he just but he did ask if um, what we felt is a select board, and I and I I would have to say I I am in favor of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, unanimous here. Yeah, I, I am too. I'm interested in pursuing the question. <coughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Not nine minutes but is not terrible to. to, to yeah, put nine minutes. If you have more questions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, or move on. Seth, Seth, you want me to continue with my questions? Well, you can continue with some more questions depending on how long-winded they are. But so, <laughs> I want to I want to ask you about first responders. You said that if I understood you correct, that, uh, that all your officers are, are first responders. Okay. And what, so, what what does that mean? So, so, if in fact there's a crime being committed, okay. a domestic somewhere or some major crime, mm -hmm. we're going to be there as a first responder. We're going to go there and quell that situation, mm -hmm. and it'll be the state police that obviously deal with it the mass part of the issue, mm -hmm. but we're there, perfect example, something happens at U32, mm -hmm. we're, if we're on scene or on here in the town, we're going to be there immediately. Mm -hmm. If we're at our office, we're going to be there immediately if it's U32, but here not there. If we're on in town, we're going to be there immediately. Mm -hmm. I'll extend a little bit further on that. Actually, Mark's in EMT. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking to introduce also to make it so all the people are EMRs, all of our, our enforcement people. So that's emergency medical responders. Yeah. And then he's opened it up to the people who want to be EMTs. He'll pay for them guys to go to the EMT school, guys and girls. So, so EMTs are how many hours of training? Oh, a the course, a, a, a lot. <laughs> it was 
five months and you know of two nights a week and every other weekend and yeah. it's a lot how many hours i couldn't tell you and, and emr is more training than emr that? is the next level down next that's level down. Okay. so it's it's more, you know by statute we have to do first aid training every year but it's really um not much Band-Aids. so this would be uh, more so than we do now but not quite to the level of emt because that is quite a commitment um emt also have right. continuing training requirements every yeah, year which you have officer are training anyway, you have to have yes it. Yeah. correct so it, it can be a lot so emr is going to be you shall emt for a handful of if you're interested so um yeah. it's one more service we can provide that's a work in progress and obviously it's going to take you know a year or two to get that rolling but it's coming but one thing I expect that we and we were, this is already happening obviously with state police short staffed we're taking a fair amount of their calls depending on what they are um, it's very common if a minor crash type situation somebody's going to involve injuries that type of stuff we let them handle that aspect of it we'll obviously be the first responder yes. but other crashes we're very capable of doing it. we're capable of even doing one with injuries but we don't want to char- be charging you guys the extra money and all that that's involved and the extra investigation. So the minor crashes, it's going to take us literally no time to do. There's no sense for them having to run all the way here to get here if we're already on scene and dealing with it. Okay. So we we already started that in a lot of the towns. Okay. And I understood from the state police presentation that there are different levels of law enforcement training for their troopers. Uh, I believe it was a, a three-point scale. Uh, does that sound familiar? There's different certifications in the state of Vermont, level mm-hmm. one, two, and three. Yep. All, our, all our officers are level two or level three. Okay. The only real difference when you get down, it somewhat depends on the individual agency. Level two, you have kind of a, there's a range of what you can do and what you can't do, depending on what training you're sent to. Um, we train our people to a very high level as a level two officer. Mm-hmm. They are fully capable of handling Everything except what statute says they can't, which is a handful of stuff usually involving death um, and sexual assault and things of that nature. Okay. So it's stuff that we tend not to deal with within our contracts anyways. Okay. So it's kind of a moot point. Okay. And at this point, one of the things with hiring one more full-timer on is hopefully, for one, that person will be a level three certified. But we have two people that we're hoping to be able to send to the full-time academy here within the next couple of years, being able to get them up to level three. So our antenna is... Obviously, they have a lot more level three certified people out here than what, right. what we would normally have. So, um, okay. And then I, I reached out to our Washington County Senator Ann Watson because she's been on the House Committee, who, or sorry, the Senate Committee that has been looking at the, the bill uh, reforming the sheriff's departments and, uh, and yes. told her, hey, we're, we're having a discussion uh, just based on what you've seen, what questions would you suggest that we... We ask, and so these are not directed with any thought towards what's happened at Washington County Sheriff in particular, but just uh, from her perspective in the state as a whole. And one question is, do you expect the sheriff to reside in Vermont for the duration of the contract? And I'll ask, do you uh, expect to reside in Washington County for the duration of the contract? So Some I, sheriffs have moved out of state while still being paid. I was born in, at CVH. I've lived in Barrytown my whole life other than college in the Army. And I chose to come back here. I have a 10-year-old at home, so I'm going nowhere for at least eight years. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Um, so how, what sort of work schedule or log would you maintain? I think you've, you've given a, a pretty good answer to that already. Well, but. Is this for the patrol contract? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, we're no different than the state police. We all are on what we call Velcor. That's our CAD RMS system now. Okay. So as far as if you're looking for what can I give you for data, I'll be able to give you the same reports that state police do. If you have one particular that they're using that you want me to basically copy and use, yeah. I am more than pleased to do that. Okay. But all you got to do is whoever is going to be the person in charge, let me know what you want, and I can present stuff to and you. Quarterly, you can, you can give a rundown of all the stops and everything they did. That the type of stops and when they happen, where they happen. Pretty, pretty like, easy. Yeah. Pretty and, easy. And the hours worked. And uh, the hours days. worked. That's done, that's done through our bookkeeping yeah. part. That'll be done through the invoicing. It'll give you, right. you know, day, the hours worked, the mileage driven, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, but, but as far as the other data, that's, that's easy. You just, you tell me what you want and I'll put it together. Okay. Yeah. And then the next question is uh, what sort of conflict of interest policy you have at the department? And she mentions one sheriff created a nonprofit 
that was basically the na named the same thing as a sheriff's office, it, and the sheriff was raising money through it, so it had at least the appearance of a conflict of interest. So there isn't any conflict of interest policy. Actually, there is. Um, well, it's actually it's a state policy. Well, it's the we state have. policy, correct? Yeah. Yes. That that's built into the statewide thing, but there isn't anything that specifically um, prevents that. But those of us who were aware of that were just like, oh God. It's nothing that's ever going to happen at the Washington County Sheriff's Department. Okay, so, so you don't have any other entity other than the department that no. you raise money for? <laughs> we do not. <laughs> Very good. Um, okay. yeah, there's some mailings for the Vermont Sheriff's Association, which is a statewide organization of all the sheriff's departments as a whole, but that has been around for I don't know how long. As long as I know. As long as I know. Okay. But that's a that's a state-approved entity. So. Okay. You know, I, I am on a couple board of directors for a, a piano technician group. Believe it or not, I'm a piano tuner. I'm the president of the Piano Technicians Guild. And I'm also <laughs> on the, the, the board of directors of uh, the Green Mountain Council of the Boy Scouts here in Vermont. Yeah, so okay. that's my involvement with other organizations. So. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't sound like people would be likely to mistake those for the sheriff's office. Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then finally, I'm not she wasn't sure whether this is applicable to the contract, uh, but I'll, I'll just throw it out there. Um, when someone receives a relief from abuse order and they need to go back to the house where they used to live to get their stuff, usually a sheriff accompanies the person leaving the relationship to get the stuff. Unfortunately, the sheriff's department usually charges the person who needs to retrieve their stuff for that time. Uh, what, what, what's your policy there? So the, the, the TROs can be... The restraining orders. Okay. I used to work for Mount Pilger PD, for example. Um, we would go and we'd serve them, and it ha one person would have to leave, and they would be, give, be given the opportunity to receive um, to go back to the house and get their belongings one time in the presence of law enforcement. Yeah. And uh, pl uh, any police officer, any constable, any sheriff's deputy, any state police officer, any law enforcement officer can do that. But it all came down to most agencies are like, we don't have time for that. Call the sheriffs. Um, it really comes down to they all have their, their their main roles versus us. We do all kinds of different things. Um, outside of these contracts, the sheriff's departments don't have a budget. We don't receive any money from the state other than my salary and two employees' salary. But we the, the vehicles, the equipment, the training, the uniforms, all of that are paid for by these contracts. So when we go out and do something, somebody has to be paying for that. So we've always uh, go see the sheriffs, and we've done it as a service because nobody else is, but they, um, they've needed to pay for our time because somebody has to pay for it. Okay. So. Okay. And then finally, uh, you know, the town is a member of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Uh, we have a couple of advocates there working for us. Uh, I, I'm curious if you have any uh, reflections that you'd like us to hear on this legislation relating to the sheriff's office. Um. This is just my, my personal take is this is more of a, a human problem than a sheriff's problem. A few people were doing things that they shouldn't have, and they are no longer here other than the gentleman in Franklin, which is working its way through the criminal justice system. Um, so the people that were a problem are gone. Um, when it comes to oversight of the sheriffs, the sheriffs are a constitutional officer, the same as the governor. And who oversees the governor? The voters. Who is supposed to oversee the sheriff? The voters. So to set up the, you know, have these these sheriffs done some things that they, they shouldn't have, you betcha. Am I upset as everybody else? You betcha. But this is not the way to solve the problem. This is a human problem. So thank you. Okay. So um, just to move forward, I think we're interested in everyone on the select board seems interested in uh, pursuing this to um, maybe finding out how many hours a month we're thinking of. Um, we were at 20 hours a month with the state police. Um, I don't know as we need much more than that. If you're at the three hour a day or six hour a week, is that the increments that we're talking about? We do it by the threes. I'm gonna look to do three to six hours a week. Now we twice a week you get enforcement if we're staying on a three hour schedule. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to make it fit with your schedule and our needs. So, you know, I know it's not going to come out exactly 20 hours if you're doing three or six hours a week. If it's six hours a week, that's 25, 26 hours or something a month. If, if you tell us what you would like, Brett can sit down with the okay. schedule and 
figure it out. It doesn't have right. to be decided right. this second. So. It won't break the treasury okay. if we haven't if we haven't worked twenty four hours actually. <laughs> Just see what the budget is. Yeah. 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 We can look at the. That's yeah. Not, yeah. That's yeah. 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 So we'll look at our budget and figure that out, right? So yep. I, I can now leave a know. copy of the draft contract behind for your reference. Great. That'd be great. So. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thing, I just want to say, hey, Seth, I just want to say something to it. You know, I drove for eight years to Hardwick. Uh, as Tom Andrew up there. And um, and I'll tell oh, you really? that having... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, having having the sheriffs uh, periodically there at Woodbury Pond and around that whole, that whole area through the camping area there where you're supposed to be driving 40 and everybody drives faster... That's that actually slowed people down a lot, and I really appreciated ha having you folks there. So, and if you do the same yeah, thing I, here, I think it's going to be a really good improvement for us. I think so too, and especially on the areas we've had problems with, for, uh, up by the uh, old meeting house and areas like that, we've had a lot of trouble speeding up there, and I think this might work. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, I think we should pursue this contract myself. And see what it's going to cost us and how it matches up with our budget. Cool. That sound good? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't need a motion or anything. No. No, no because yeah. we cool. won't we won't do the motion yet until we figure out what the costs are and how that's going to fit in. We have to look over the contract. So. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, okay. Thank you guys. so ju just one, one other question. I mean, we're in here talking with Vermont State Police. It sounds like they don't have a lot of capacity for us at, at this point. Uh, but uh, you know, should that change in the future? What's your experience working with a town that has a contract with both Vermont State Police and the Sheriff's Office? Historically, I don't know if it's ever happened. Okay. I know that we were supposed to many years ago, uh -huh. and that was to basically cover Center Road area however many years back. and. Never attritioned, but that's the only only one that I know of that uh, yeah. was even. We have a good working relationship, so right. yeah. I don't see there being any issues. Yeah. Okay. We we don't have any problem with the state police. It's just that the contract that we have with them has not they haven't been able to fulfill it. And there's you know, when they say we've worked zero hours January, February, March, well why do we have a contract? It just didn't make any sense to me. It's like yeah. they're we do have some issues, not a lot of law enforcement enforcement issues, but if we have a contract, it'd be nice if it was fulfilled at least to some extent as far as the hours work goes. And it sounds like you folks are more on that same page where you put it on your schedule and the contract gets more or less fulfilled. That's so the intent. I, I think that's the intent and I I like that um I like the intent and I like the fact that you're gonna put it on your schedule. And I think that we'll get more, I think we'll get some um, enforcement where we need it. That's the feeling I'm getting. So thank you for coming in and uh, leave a sample contract and we'll see how it works out with our budget. We appreciate you. your time. If you have thank any you. questions, let us know. By all means. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You were very, very informative and um, thank you for answering the question so well. By appreciate it. Good night. So were we on camera? Do you have body cams? We do. On? All right. Here. That's what the little box is here for. Yeah, okay. Comb your hair. <laughs> Pardon? Comb your hair. Yeah, I'm okay. already on several cameras. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a lot of cameras. Yeah, that reflection is oh, Carl's head is killing me. Sorry, I just realized Whoops. Okay. Um okay, so now what is going on here? Do you folks have a screen or maybe I do? Oh, well. Can What's you see that? me or not? Yeah. What's that? Kind of. Kind of, yeah. I got to see if I can get rid of this, but I'm not having much luck. Anyway. Okay. What's that? There's a blue button. Yeah, I'm trying to get it taken care of. But... He's, trying to click on, he's trying to do what Sean just did. I'll make that dialog box go away. I can't make, I'm trying to make it go away. I'm not having much luck. Your technical consultant nearby? I, no, my consultant's gone. Um, but let's go to the next item and I can fool around with it while we're talking. Okay. So the next thing is discussion on ARPA funds and it's review VLCT ARPA information. And that's, so here we go. I could possibly 
I had some really good conversations with the VLTC, VLCT experts on ARPA, in addition to probably even more importantly, the town's external auditor, um, Sullivan and Powers, because I was kind of going round and round with this on how, what the best way is to approach it. And speaking with the auditor was great. What many towns are doing, as you see what I wrote in the memo, is essentially um, the overarching guidance is to cover, use ARPA funds to cover your employee salary and benefit expenditures. Um, it's very clean to do that. The idea behind this is when you allocate or use ARPA funds to cover salaries and benefits expenses, you're just essentially telling the federal government that this is what you're using ARPA funds for. You record a nice credit in your general fund um, for allocating the funds to ARPA or allocating the costs to ARPA. And that frees up your general fund to then reallocate the general fund as needed to your capital reserve, whatever the case may be. It's a shell, it's a shell game. It is a shell game. <laughs> I'm trying to speak very politically That's correctly, but yes, it is a shell game. So when I spoke with yeah. the external auditor, that is the guidance. So I've put together a list um, that I think I forgot to print out and put in it. Well, it's in the memo, actually. I forgot. Yeah. I copied it in the memo. Um, so what I'm proposing we do is I will call out the broadband enhancement as a hundred thousand dollar allocation. So we have to do reporting April 30th. I'm going to call out the art, the broadband enhancement because we did commit funds to CV fiber. That's a pretty clean thing for us to identify as a use of ARPA funds. I am yep. in the process and will present to you at the next select board meeting, a proposal for a chunk of salary and benefit expense that would then be attributed to ARPA or would be using ARPA funds to fund um, in this April 30th reporting. The one piece of advice in a lot of literature that I've read is to, you have until December 31st, 2024 to obligate your expenditures. You have until December 31st, 2026 to spend. The guidance is if you're using salary and benefit expense, show that it's all been spent by December 31st, 2024, because in doing this, you are identifying the employees, you are identifying the costs. If employees leave, you've lost that employee, theoretically that bucket of money would, that you've considered obligated would disappear. So it could be lost. All right. So they're yeah. suggesting that if you're going this route, which again is the overall advice <laughs> that they recommend that you do. There's lots of articles on this, by the way. Um, but, uh, that you just show that you've essentially spent the funds by December 31st, 2024. So that is what I'm working on. So I'm currently going back. The reporting period for ARPRA runs from April to March, which is inconsistent with our year end. However, we had something very interesting happen in April last year and I was hired and we had some transition of staffing that occurred in this office. It's actually a pretty ideal time to start looking at staffing costs and allocating costs or identifying cost that could be ARPA eligible. So that's what I'm working on. One thing I am looking at is the guidance on, the auditor told me just get a spreadsheet together, show the costs, and this is what you're saying is ARPA. Um, but I just wanna do some reading. I'll probably take it a little bit more detailed. Odds of us ever encountering an audit from the federal government is pretty slim. They're gonna probably go after the 10 million and up people. Um, but uh, so that's kind of where we are. The next step to this, though, is we obviously want to keep our eye on the ball as to what the ARPA funds were. So we still need to, I'm proposing this just goes into, and I, Michelle and I have talked about this, it just kind of goes into the general bucket, but I still think it's good. We all know we have these funds. These are additional funds that are above and beyond that we have identified in our capital or have available in our capital reserve. So we still want to maintain a project list of how we are using this extra money that the town is going to have to use for future projects. So that's your list right here. So that's, this is a start of yeah. the list. Mm -hmm. So it is yeah. a, a start of the list for us to, I, de I was getting in more detail trying to find, you see the employee laptops. This is when I was trying to get into incredible detail for this April 30th reporting. I can back off on this a little bit, though I don't think it's bad to have your eyes on some of these potential expenditures as well. well so, the phone system you mentioned, I think that's so that's the next agenda item, but yes, yeah. we need a phone system. Um, so 
you know, there, there are certainly things that we know that we need to do. So this was me. These are the things we know that are on our radar. Obviously, we have a significant amount of money that would still be allocated beyond this. And I was guessing at some of these amounts. So, you know, have no idea what yeah. the design of the town garage is going to be. But we just yeah. we, we know there are things we need to do. So this is my attempt to get this going. Where's but where's this? Yeah, where's this? it's actually in the memo. Oh. The, right at the First beginning. One page. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank There's you. a little box on your okay. second page, page yeah. two of five. Yes. There's a little box at the top. Okay. Thank you. Have we been approached by anyone from the community asking us what we're going to do with the money? Oh, well, I mean, it's it's a question. I mean, I think, actually, Kim Watson brought it up in the town forum, I think. Um, and then Twin Valley, this was a long time ago. I'd have to go pull back when, did, did submit a request for some funds. So, I mean, I think the second piece of this is then going to become the question of how we get this out to the community to get, obviously, Four Corners recently came to us with the mold issue in the Four Corners schoolhouse, which is going to be discussed in detail at the next meeting. Um, so, I mean, this becomes, I think I've requested if we probably create a committee to field these types of requests because someone's going to have, I mean, we're going to have to, the select board's going to determine, have to determine how they're going to hear these requests and how you're going to prioritize and how you all want to move forward with that. Because we have been asked these questions already. Yeah. Town meeting or otherwise, what do you do? What are we doing with the ARPA money? Yeah. It's their money. Yeah. So, so just, just so I mean, just for the sake of um, of the record, we're talking about the ARPA money, the American Rescue Plan Act money. The town has an allocation of about uh, seven hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars, of which we've already committed a hundred thousand to, or given a hundred thousand to CV Fiber for broadband expansion. Mm -hmm. And we have earlier on for us established guidelines that we are not going to use this money for ongoing expenses, but for one-time expenses. Uh, we al also have talked about, um, which cuts a little bit against that, uh, possibly using that to reduce the tax rate when we set the tax rate for this upcoming year. So if we do this shell game and, um, and use the ARPA money to pay for what are really ongoing expenses, employee expenses, then we know that we have for actual ARPA allocations, we have these deadlines that you've mentioned at the end of 2024 and end of 2026 to commit the money and then spend the money. Uh, what does that shell game do to our deadlines? Is there is there any deadline for it's using that money? Funds in perpetuity. Okay. That's the point. They're yeah. obligated at that point. Because you right. have now eliminated the risk right. Right. that you obligated funds, potentially mm -hmm. hired a contractor, or whatever you're going to do that now mm -hmm. can't complete the work by December 31st, 2026. You right. are now on the hook for that money. Your ARPA money would no longer be eligible right. to be used for right. that expense. Right. And so, so we that's could, the point in this. So we could keep it on the books in for as long as we wanted to pay for some future one-time thing or something that's in the pipeline that we're planning. Correct. Or we uh, and we, that does not mean that we would need to take all the ARPA funds and use it to reduce the tax rate immediately. Correct. Okay. No, we would end the year with a surplus, mm -hmm. and we can decide how we right. account for that surplus. Yeah. So. Very good. So yeah, that's the whole idea. That's why I mean the words I, I used were not mine, um, but it frees up the you know non-grant revenues that would have been used to cover salaries and benefits to be expended on new projects and programs to increase fund balance or to replace other revenue sources. So the freed up non-grant revenues are not subject to award terms, time limits, or other federal grant regulations. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Right. And, I, and ideally, the ARPA money should be used for one-time expenses. Right. Yeah. And that's, Something that's not going to yeah. leave us short of money in the next year or the year exactly. after the year after. Yeah. And that's really what we're going to do with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. We're, just, yeah. we're just getting it into a bucket yes. that gives yeah. us free access to be able to use that mm -hmm. and not be restrained by these time limits. So good chance we'll probably spend the money before 26 anyway, but right. it, it eliminates right. that that mm -hmm. requirement. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you for so the only question really at this point is you, you, you've talked about reaching out to the um, taxpayers about various projects that people might have ideas for. 
is that something that that's something we need to be cognizant cognizant of now is it not we need to be establishing a committee and doing the the reach out yeah it's 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 an interesting quandary because if you have a forum or you put stuff out on front porch forum solicit your ideas and then how do you call them censor them uh rate them and and who's going to be would there be a committee that that sends it to the select board should it be a committee of non select board members um as me you know yeah. <laughs> we, we've handled well, things like this in the past by having a committee of non-select board members with uh, one or two select board members on it as liaisons. If you if you have fewer yeah. than three, then it doesn't trigger uh, right. quorums of the select board when you meet. Yeah, I guess it's a leap of faith. You got to be common sense. We got we have to do something. The public has to be in, engaged. Yeah. The yeah. There's no doubt, and yeah. they should be. Yeah. But do you just do with solicit emails, or do you have a forum? Probably put something in writing well, and just send it. What, what have other towns done as far as community, reaching out to the community? Does anybody know? It's all over the place. Um, sending out, you know, a survey to having a forum, to having a community day, people bring their ideas. So I think it's, and I mean, some towns had a need, had needs already identified and they needed the funds for right. Big you know, items, building right. building issues that and needed water, to be sewer. exactly they they got a saving grace of the funds that so some towns I don't know they have gone I don't know that they did go <laughs> and solicit because they just simply there was nothing yeah, left yeah, by the time a, they dealt with yeah, what they needed to do. Towns in the information you sent, I looked, I looked through the whole spreadsheet. Yeah, and it was just the, just the big hitters for the most part. Yeah, yeah. If we if we do this shell game, uh, the money that's freed up. Uh, are there any restrictions on using that for matching grants? That's Very good. Also the thing. Yep. Okay. <laughs> good question. Yeah. 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 Write that in there. You can match. You, you've eliminated all of those restrictions yeah. by doing this. That, this because is it's clean we, money now. Yeah. It's exactly. Just, like, it's it's your it money. Our it's the town's money, just like if you raised it exactly yeah. through regular right. tax dollars. Yeah, that's right. You laundered it, so to speak. <laughs> oh, oh, <boy>. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't use that. Sure. Don't say that on video, but, <laughs> no, <laughs> but you've laundered it in a nice, clean way. That term is used. <laughs> so. Be, be careful, because there's something called the recall. Act. Reaching out to the community. How do you how do you present that to the community, and then what do you do with the information that comes back? Yep. So. Um, I mean, you could actually do just a special meeting, say, hey, let's go to the, let's meet up and we're having an open hearing or whatever, open meeting, people are, are uh, people can tune in or advertise that somewhere or post it or put it on front porch forum. And uh, we could have a select board meeting and an hour or two is devoted to that. You, you could do that. I really think you, you have to also, you know, it's like an Australian ballot. You have to give the opportunity for people to send in an email, not just a forum, people, child care, whatever. The reason why we only get 150 people to a town, to a, uh, you know, March meeting. So I, I, I wouldn't just have a forum. I would have, I think the email is better and you want to have a forum, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't exclude that. I'd be getting well, we, we, I'm, I'm open to ideas. You can mail out surveys to everybody if you want to. Yeah. That's really like the Australian ballot is you mail, mail a ballot to everybody and they have the choice to respond or not. You can have write-in. You can send a candidate a write-in project. Yeah. That's, an, that's an idea too, or, yeah. or at least a postcard with a link. Well, like we, we're interested in doing something with the town garage eventually. And uh, with the town offices yeah. eventually. And those could be in there as potential projects, but we could also have write-in projects. Yep. That would work out pretty well, I think. Mm -hmm. And we could, we could work that with the planning, planning yeah. commission that they're responsible for long-term planning of the town. Say, okay, what, <laughs> what comes up to the top of no, yeah. your list that costs Stick money? Stick them with it. Yeah. And there's <laughs> also <laughs> the rainy day fund. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess you can. And once you've made it through... 
yeah. process and you've, you've used it's your un- money for the, for the un- project. Un- yeah. yeah, you can. You, sp- you spent that money on salaries. Right, that's right. Yeah, like, but you just can't take that money and put it into a rainy day. That's it. That's I understand. You already yeah. spent the money on salaries. Yeah. Right. You already spent the money. We already have a rainy day fund. I understand. Yeah. Is, it, is it sufficient? Yes, it is. Oh, what if it's more than sufficient. We have okay. lots of money around. You never have enough, Seth. <laughs> well, let's not be that greedy here. So never why have, don't we... Never so, you never have enough cows or money. <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> um, a joke along this whole way, by the way. Are we are we gonna are we going to do a mailing? Is that what the consensus is? A postcard of some kind? I'm trying to remember if what sort of comments we said at town meeting and town forum that we're gonna do, uh, so it'd be consistent with that. Did we talk about having a committee formed or just that we were gonna have a public process we were more generally? Explore it, but I don't mm-hmm. think I didn't I think it would potentially be helpful to have the committee so. formed yeah. and then get some <clears throat> committee ideas because who knows what they're going to come up with because someone okay. seeking yeah, interest to join the committee would be helpful. But I, I think Gina's right, with Seth, to have a okay. uh, form a committee. Okay, sounds good. What are the ideas for the committee then? Five, five members... One select board liaison, seven members, two select board liaisons. We we'll just worry about the members. One of us will definitely show up, even if we can't go to every meeting. Right. We'll have representation. Right. Five people on a committee, if we can get it, sounds logical to me. I, I think we will have interest on this committee. I do too. Yeah. 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 Um, should we want to put a number? Maybe if we get so many qualified people, it'd be seven. I, I Maybe it should be ambiguous. Yeah, well, we, could, we could say five to seven for, for now. Yeah. Okay. And we want to advertise for those members? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It'll go on the okay. website, on Porch Forum. Okay. Okay, so let's do that. So that would be a first step, and we'll advertise for five to seven members, and then we'll see what we get, and then we can figure out what we have to fill in with select board members. And well, I think it was by May 1st. At our May 1st meeting? Um, if, sure. we get, if we can get the members by, yeah, that's a full month. That's yeah. Good. Is that reasonable in terms of your timeline, Gina? Oh, yeah, I'll get this yeah. posted this week. Yeah, okay. Cool. Okay. Well, let's do that. At least we get something started. Yeah. So, we are right on schedule. No, we're not. We're... 10 minutes behind, so we better get rolling here. Is everyone willing to move to the next item? Yeah. Yes, sure. Okay. We made a plan for ARPA. We will advertise for committee members, and we'll finalize the committee on May 1st. Um, so, 715, consideration of local emergency management plan. Lem. I think you sent uh, something out. You skipped one. No, you, yeah. you skipped one. It, he ha- he may have. I gave him some papers. Oh, do the phone. Do, do the phone. So, do the phone. Consideration Seth, the, of quote for new town office phone system. Seth, we have a. Oh, I've got a different agenda. Yeah, right. you have the you have the you have the preview agenda from last week. So there's yeah. a new. I got a an official quote from RB Tech to replace the town office phone system which is okay. uh, 16 years old and was installed or, and was refurbished when it was installed. So it wasn't actually new even 16 years ago. So um, yeah. I got a quote from RB Tech for $11,265 to uh, replace our phone system. And there will be a monthly charge of seven fifty dollars per month for the new phone system, but we will catch up to modern times. This is a very similar system that exists at the uh, emergency at the um, ESF building. Yeah. yeah, the fire station building. Yeah. Okay. Do we currently have okay. a, um, a fax line that's a, just a POTS line, as they say, plain old telephone system line? Yeah. And will that continue to be yeah. in place? Oh, yeah. So yeah. in case the power goes out, we'll still have one functioning phone yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, okay. Did, did we, did we did this go out to bid? Does it have to go out to bid? So technically the 
um, policy would be over $10,000, we would go out to bid. We're pretty close to that. Um, RB Tech is going to be the preferred supplier. Um, so I would like to just move forward with RB Tech if we could. Um, they're local. They're local. They currently manage all the technology in yeah. the office. Yeah. They're incredibly wonderful to work with. Um, so we're close enough to that that I felt like we could probably, hopefully, make it work with RB Tech. That's, that's my preference also. I mean, we know this is a fair price, I assume. I mean, I trust you. I thought it was going to be 15 to 20 so from my Googling and researching. Oh, yeah. okay. So you did some yeah. preliminary. Okay. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's in the ballpark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As long as there was some yeah. investigation. I'll, I'll make a motion. Do you need a motion? You got to. Yes. I make a motion to accept the bid for RB Technologies for the new phone system. Are we seconding it? John, John, you seconding it? Yes, sir. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. So now we will move to the next item, which is the consideration of local emergency plan, LEMP. It's an annual requirement for the town to adopt a LEMP. The format of the document is consistent with prior years. Yep. And Toby has reviewed uh, the document. Seth, it would require your and yours and my signature, which we can do when you return. Um, but yeah, I'll be back. People, I'll be back in a couple of days. I can sign on Thursday. People can also review it if they have, you know, we theoretically. It doesn't look like there's too many changes. No, it's select board members, mm. Bruce to me. I did tweak yeah. a little bit of the document based on my meeting with the state um, just to clean up the way it was laid out a little bit in certain areas um, based on the experts um, recommendation but overall consistent with prior years okay sounds good to me so, so we do need a motion to adopt it, I believe, or yeah, one, for us one, to sign it. One thing that just strikes me this time, and I don't know why I haven't noticed it so much before, is at the top of page two under resources, emergency spending limits. This gives the select board chair the authority to spend an unlimited amount of town money uh, in the case of emergency, I believe. Uh, is that is that standard? So previously it said no limit, okay. which was unclear when I went, met with the state of what that meant. Okay. The person with the state told me they would read that as everyone on that list had absolutely unlimited spending okay. capability. Okay. So I wrote this in an attempt to create some type of spending limit. Okay. So that was all that was there before. It literally just said no limit. Okay. And do you know how other towns handle it? No, he did. He said it's all different. Okay. I mean, how different towns decide to handle it. Mm -hmm. So his only recommendation was, he said, what you have in here is unclear right. um, to what it means. Right. Do we want? So do we want to set a limit? We can set it to anything you want it to be. Right. I mean, our current select board chair, I have great faith in to use the authority <laughs> judiciously, but uh, he uh, he won't forever be the select board chair, and I. You know, hate to see this just automatically go forward without a future select board member uh, or select board uh, catching it and revising it. Oh, so but you I do I'd adopt like this every limit. year. We do adopt it each year. There's a uh, there's a chance to, to flag it, but um, I don't know. The reason is no the reason is no limit is because you don't know what the emergency is going to be. Yeah. And we really right. in some situations wouldn't be able to sit down here and warn a meeting or warn a special meeting or call right. an emergency meeting, get down here and. Yeah. And make decisions, you know. They're trying to take a little bit of that complication out of it. Yeah. So just to be clear, well, we we do have the ability. What 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 set was that? Set dollar. We'll see what happens. Set it for a dollar. Is that what you said? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just to be clear, we do have the ability to convene an emergency meeting with with no public uh, right. notice whatsoever. Um, so we could get three people together. I I would I would want to. Put suggest maybe a hundred thousand. Exactly. What's the downside? Or, do, or just use your fund balance. Whatever the fund balance is. Because we can we can also get you know together on on Zoom. Right. 
Well, you're, you know, you, you got to, you know, if we were going through a thing called like a pandemic, we might not get together. If we were going through a power outage at the same time, we might not be able to get on Zoom. Yes, Who was going to make the decision? Those things yeah, would never yeah, that's happen. True. That's true. Those things would never happen. <laughs> you'd never have a pandemic. You would never, yeah. you would never have a power outage. Yeah. 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 Five and a half days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good I just thought I'd throw that out there. What did yeah. you, do you remember what you got, what you had when you were? I was about to ask. When, when, so when I left so from, much. when I left from my other other job. Where was that? Um, Where was that? The town of Hardwick, <laughs> which um, the, the, the point, though, is that we weren't using this form. It was different than this. Uh, okay. And there wasn't a limit. It wasn't even an amount there. You just designated who was responsible. Which was kind of what we had. And it was an emergency or management. no limits. Yeah. It was, like I said, the, the, the person yeah. I met with said yeah. oh, yeah. that really <clears throat> kind of means it's unlimited. There was an emergency so, management coordinator, which... W w which would have been the chair of the select board and, and a chief of police and, and, and the fire chief. Just since this is my first yeah. test of this. So in theory, the, the um, head honcho of the select board, the chair can spend unlimited cookie dough spend. I need to spend, it's an emergency. I can need to spend a million dollars to buy that, that cookie over there. Where is there, who, does somebody else have to sign off on it? I mean, what, what is the checks and balance of, Spending a dollar or a million. Is there? In an, if it's a declared emergency? That's what we're defining. Right. So again, previously it said no limit. So Right, but what Seth says I want you to I want you to wire five hundred thousand dollars to Nick to Nigeria. What it, does the treasurer then have to report it to the town administrator? Does it have is there That's we not don't know. Defined. So let's put a hundred thousand dollars on this for right now. Yeah, just, just, Why would you send money to Nigeria? I'm just curious. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I think at the end of the day, there would be some inherent checks and balances if something, if something were a request were to come in that did not make practical sense. Certainly, if I saw something, if Seth were requesting to do something, certainly I would reach out to someone else on the select board if I, if I thought there was something inappropriate happening. Um, so you kind of can't really do much without. This office, write a check. so exactly, so right. someone yeah. has to write a check. The, the and, and our, our our entire credit limit for all of our credit cards is eighty five hundred dollars. So Guthrie couldn't Guthrie couldn't even right. really technically spend up to the ten thousand unless he put something on account. Right. I don't know what you okay. could buy for a million dollars at Eastmont Pillar Home well, Center, but I I don't know if this is the case. But let me just uh, be the devil's advocate here. It seems to me if we pre-authorize the select board chair to spend an unlimited amount of money, that that person can call up somebody and say, I have legal authorization to you know ask for this million dollar item for the, on behalf of the town. It doesn't matter whether you guys are going to write the check out for it. He, he has the authority to it. You have to. The town has taken on that debt in that case. Does that make sense? Yeah. Put a limit on it then. He said, "How about hundred thousand dollars? You can. I'm, I'm with Carl. Okay. I'm in the Carl camp on that. Hundred K. It's fine with me. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. I, mean, I, yeah. I don't care. It's not a yeah. right. And it'll all change when you know these plans are great, but no plan ever stands the first moment of battle anyway. Exactly. And it's would, change. Would, would you make a note, uh, Gina, to bring this up with Sullivan Powers next time you talk with our external auditors and just. See, because you talk about anti-corruption mm -hmm. things with them, just to see if they have any Fraud suggestions protection. here. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I can ask them. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Usually, this is more based on policies than it is audit. Mm -hmm. um, this would, so we don't necessarily have a policy on this. So I'm not sure that how much. Well, this is our policy, right? Essentially, yeah. but it doesn't get into. The authorizations, the, you know, we have a purchasing policy. Yeah. We have this. This is usually not something that, in my experience, that would fall under external audit okay, well maybe review. They, maybe they, they don't say it's outside our purview, but you know, that mm -hmm. would be useful information too. And just just um, the way I interpret this, it says uh, right under resources, it says use municipal resources, mutual aid agreements, and local purchases first to get resources for response as needed and available. So I'm reading it that anything. Beyond that is what we're um, we're authorizing. So even even if it did say unlimited, it would not quite be unlimited because there would be that that whole set of limitations. Okay. So what do you want to do? Hundred thousand, I think. So like you said. I just like to move on. Yeah. I would too. Yeah. So 
Do you want to set a limit or not? Yes. We, we can write the limit in, and then just when we approve the plan, we'll approve the limit. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hundred grand. So we're not approving the plan now. No. No. Unless you want okay. to state that I make that change to a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, and then All Seth, right. when Seth returns, we can go ahead and sign it and send it off if that's the only change we're making. So moved. Yeah. Okay. Is it Seth's signature that's required on this? Yeah. Previously yeah. was Bruce and Seth. Yeah. So, so yeah. what did, did you do? We need to restate the uh, the motion. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes. So the motion is to adopt, to accept, to with the change of the to limit. adopt the local yeah. emergency management plan yeah. as presented, with the change to set the emergency spending limit for the select board chair to a hundred thousand dollars. Sure. Why don't you just set it for the amount that's in the contingency fund? Sounds like that'd be smarter, but that's what I said, like the fund balance or whatever here. Uh -huh. The fund that, balance that is two hundred and something. That would require the select board chair to look up that number in an emergency. You may not know it. Yeah, it's two. It it's two. It's it's about two hundred and sixty-four thousand. Last thing I knew, but I'm not exactly we, sure we, of that. But it was pretty close. Yeah, we agreed on a hundred grand. Two of us, anyway. Yeah. I, I I honestly don't care. You can put it for ten dollars for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> if if it's sufficient emergency that we'd want to spend more than a hundred thousand, I think the select board would converge on the town office and we'd have an emergency. I think that even if they got to a hundred thousand, that that would be a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, so if you want to put a hundred thousand, let's do it, and then okay. make make the motion, including that, and then. Then I'll sign it when I get back. Carl already did. He made the motion. We guys, sure. we, I, I stated a motion. I can make it. <laughs> Whatever. And who made the second, Scott? I did. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Got it. Um, so the next item is consideration of community capacity building mini grant. And Ben McCall of the Energy Committee will be in attendance to discuss the request to submit an application. Ben is that is here. you are here? Yeah. Uh, can you discuss the request? Yeah. So I, hi, I'm here. I'm Ben McCall. Um, I'm the facilitator of the Energy Committee. Right. And um, we came across this uh, Municipal Energy Resilience Program, or MERP, from the state of Vermont which has three upcoming major features. One, which I'm here to today to talk about, is a up to $4,000 community capacity building mini grant. The second piece of this is free building energy resilience assessments for municipal structures. And that unlocks the third piece, which is up to half a million dollar implementation grants, which can be used for weatherization, thermal efficiency, uh, renewable uh, energy systems, and, and so forth. Uh, the energy resilience assessments are not yet ready, so all that's out right now are these community capacity building mini grants, which is basically you can ask for $4,000 to support the activities of the energy committee, uh, maybe you know if, if we might need to hire a consultant to get a little bit of data in support of developing the enhanced energy plan, or if we want to have a community forum to discuss ideas around energy planning, or, or things like that. We don't actually have to specify exactly what we're going to use the money for. We just have to ask for it. Um, and it's a first come, first served grant. It's non-competitive. So uh, even though the committee's just getting started and we don't really know what we're doing yet, it seemed like we ought to go ahead and apply for this uh, mm -hmm. so that we get in the queue. So, so it's not non-competitive. You don't have to specify what you're going to use it for. Then There's a series of tick boxes that uh, on the application. So you, you can tick energy committee and consultant and okay. community forum yeah. or something like and that. And do a short little paragraph. Of There's not even a narrative. Oh, it's, not, okay. You just have to say who the town uh, yeah. authorized representative yeah. is, uh, you know, what town you're in. Uh, I, I sent Gina the yeah. application and kind of pre-filled it out for her. It's just, yeah, it's just a point. Just because they don't want to read all that stuff. <laughs> for $4,000, I think they don't want to deal yeah. with the right. yeah. yeah. Oh, I understand. Yeah. That, that's great. I think this is pretty controversial. I'll make a motion to, uh, <laughs> to do the, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, but I'm cutting, I'm cutting the thing off here. 
I make a motion to uh, to give a um, to a, a give approval to go for the mini grant to the energy committee for the for the energy. Do we need a Thank motion? you for serving. That's my motion. Do we need a motion? Oh, no, we, well, just, really we just got to let Sam apply. We're not applying it. Uh, so I, I, would, I would throw up, Mr. Chairman. I would throw up my motion. <laughs> actually, actually, though, the, it's the town that applies, yeah. not the energy committee. Oh, I understand. So of Gina course. would have to go yeah. and the fill town, out the, the town always applies for energy. Grant. So by consensus, we authorize Gina to apply for the mini grant on behalf of the energy committee. Yeah, he's given me everything to say, so I just have to go click it. Perfect. Okay. okay. Cool. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Okay. And. Okay. Um, so while you're thinking about financial resources that are available to you, I don't know how much you've talked about weatherization of town, further weatherization of, of town buildings, but I just want to inject into your conversation uh, the fact that we have an anonymous donor who is uh, willing to give $5,000 to weatherizing municipal buildings. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Hmm. Great. Well, I, I think as we do this, uh, the next step will be to do these energy resilience assessments, which are free, mm -hmm. uh, and then that will kind of give us a shopping list of things that need to be done on the municipal right. buildings, yeah. and we can apply for this up to 500K, and then we can supplement that with right. the 5,000 from right. yeah. uh, the donor. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for serving on the uh, energy committee. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. And sharing it. That was okay, great. so we do we have a motion for Gina to do the paperwork for the mini grant? Application. We don't need, we don't need it. Just okay. Like yep. You guys are good with it, so I'm going to do it. We've done the wave. Okay, yeah. sounds good. <laughs> okay, so I think that's it for the for Ben. Is that correct, Ben? Yep. You're okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. I was allowed to stay. He just, <laughs> out, he just did a success. You don't have to be aggressive and get rid of it. <laughs> It's so entertaining. I might stick around. Yeah. It is oh, yeah. Very entertaining. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to go to the next item, which is the consideration of VTrans or wait a minute. I guess that's it, right? VTrans grant applications. Well, we have the annual financial plan first. So first, this is right, essentially this. Back. It's essentially the same document you saw last time. Right. Um, yeah. It just includes repaving of Town Hill Road and then next you're right. going to see a grant application to request funding to help support the repaving of Town Hill Road. Um, so yeah. that as long as you're good with this, I can send this document off to uh, to VTrans. Do we have to authorize you to move ahead with it? Or do you, do we actually, this one, one yeah, yeah, this one actually requires, since there's three of you here, you can sign. So yeah. I can't remember if I stuck a, yeah, I think there is a copy of it over here. So basically what we're talking about on the uh, highway financial plan is the same. We talked about a last meeting yeah. about paving. It's the same. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just didn't want to move forward with this yet because I was meeting with Michelle Redman, our VTrans representative um, for our yeah. district. And I just wanted to go over it with her before we moved forward. And I, it, what I had was fine. So good. Okay. Everybody's okay. okay with us signing this before I set my pen to paper? Yes. Sure. Okay. Okay. Do you need a motion for any of this? No, you all are physically signing. Well, they're going to physically <laughs> sign it. So. Okay, that sounds good. So Sorry, what Sam. they're signing is the annual highway financial plan? Yes. So okay. you're done. We're done with seven, with that item. So the yes. next one is consideration of VTrans grant applications. Yes. So I have yes. two applications. Um, one is for the repaving of Town Hill Road um, that I would like to submit. Yeah. Uh, the only piece I'm waiting on is Guthrie's going to take some pictures of Town Hill Road. So before I send it in, I will get pictures okay. um, to send with the application. And then the second is I'm requesting an extension of the grant BC2063, which is the Center Road Mallory Brook culvert replacement. Yeah. That is the historic, famous historic culvert on Center yeah. Road. Um, we need to extend this because the deadline for it is December 31st of 2023. As we all know, Doug yeah. Newton was the engineer working on this project and unfortunately yeah. passed away. Bruce Johnson yeah. was also working on this project has retired. This has sat idle and yeah. it was essentially idle really 
the beginning of last year. Um, at essentially yeah. at Doug's passing, it kind of stopped. Um, yeah. so we need to get easements. We don't, I need, I, I reached out to Chase and Chase, um, to ask if Chase and Chase would have the capacity to assume essentially an engineer project oversight role of this project. They do have the capacity to do so. What exactly that means financially, I don't know. Um, so one, one, I'm giving you an application that I'm going to ask for an extension of the timeline of this project. Cause clearly December 31st, 2023, we will not have that culvert replaced or the stream altered. It's not even, it's not, it's a new culvert. It's not even replacing the culvert. Um, and then secondly, um, I think it may be worth spending some time for chase and chase and some money for chase and chase to update the budget, um, for this project. We have no idea where this is going to be. The, the last estimate was 262,400. Um, but that was in April of 2021. We all know that the world has changed dramatically since then. So we need to get an idea of what the cost would be to do this work. And then I can also ask Chase and Chase if they can give me an estimate as best as they can of what they think overseeing this project would be as well. Um, from their perspective. And then it will come back to you at that point to decide where we go with this. The grant value on this is $175,000. And I mean, that's fine that you're filing for the extension. I'm just not sure about all the various pieces, what's been completed on the whole project, because I know the Army Corps of Engineers had to sign off on it. There was a wetlands snafu on the whole thing. I don't know what happened to all that. I believe I, I don't I don't know specifically. I believe a lot of this is resolved. I mean, that's part of what I need Chase and Chase to help with okay. is to yeah. determine where we are. There are four yeah. easements that new need do need to be obtained, and that was where Doug that was what he was actively working on. The construction easements. Or the the ease the prop the easements of the property owners that are in this area. Um, he was actually in the process of waiting for snow to melt, um, and he was going to start having detailed conversations with people in April or March to April of last year. Mm -hmm. Passed away in January, so we need to have right. some are relatively to, easy to get. That's why I asked if your construction easements or permanent easements. Permanent easements are a little harder to get, but if you're doing construction, you usually go out like 15 or 20 or 30 feet on either side and those easements disappear after the construction's over. I think one or two may be a permanent easement. Those are the harder ones. Yeah. So, so yeah. I know one, the, the initial landowner that they were going to be speaking with, I know there were just questions that she had. It wasn't that she was mm -hmm. in opposition, mm -hmm. but it was very hard with all the snow on the ground. She just yeah. couldn't really get a feel mm -hmm. for what Doug was talking about, which is why Doug was going to wait for the snow to melt yeah. and then meet with her. Um, so, we need to kind of have all those conversations. So I, you know, again, I don't, I don't know. I know a little bit about, about this project. So, um, I did call Mr. Johnson well, about it, but. Okay. So the first step though, is to file for the extension. Yeah. I mean, filing for this extension doesn't cost us anything. It at least punts this yeah. so we can decide where to go from there. Cause I mean, we have no idea where the yeah. costs are going to be and what your appetite may be at that point to even move forward with the project. Right. So, is there, is there any chance they would not okay. postpone? The grant? Um, is that pretty rare? Hard to say. Uh, Michelle, when I met with Michelle Redman, she, as soon as I said, you know, Doug had passed away, she just was like, okay. and right. so it's it was so almost good. like, uh, yeah, so you know, I, I, it seems like it's a reasonable request, so yeah. I feel confident that we will okay. get this extension. And just okay. for the sake of our new select board member and also for our, our record, uh, you, you mentioned this, uh, some of this, uh, Gina, but this is a culvert, that a historical culvert, uh, which is undersized for the current stormwater standards. And we can't simply replace it in the, uh, we've been told we cannot replace it in the place where it is, which would make the, uh, the most sense. That's where the stream is. Uh, because of its historical nature, we would destroy this beautiful stone culvert. And so we are being required to reroute the stream to a place further uphill. 
and put in a bigger culvert there. And then as Seth mentioned, there's some wetlands questions. There were some archeology span questions, but I see from this paperwork that that was checked off in 2021. But it's, uh, it's your tax dollars, a lot of your tax dollars at work to uh, preserve some rocks. You could take those rocks and just give them to the historical society and yeah. have them put up on the wall it's somewhere. Yeah. Right well, it's just not the rocks, it's the carving on the wall. The, the initials right. are yes. the initials are carved in there, the people that did the work. Yeah. Is this a Rosetta stone? Is that <laughs> okay, so um do you need oh, anything yeah. else from us, Gina? Not really. I don't think I need a motion or anything for these. I just, you know. As long yeah. as keeping you guys up to date on what's going on, and yeah, that we'll... unless you had any opposition, I will be submitting these grant applications. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. It sounds good to me. Thank you. Um, so the next thing is the access permit. Curb cut on Santa Circle. Is that correct? Yes. This is for a new single family circle which that permit was already approved it was 22072 um and road foreman perry has reviewed the plans has indicated that a culvert is required um for this application so any questions or concerns okay. that the select board may have who buys the first culvert i think they do yeah yeah, yeah. Every, every town is different, but yeah. It's amazing. We're getting new houses in this town. It's phenomenal. It's amazing. North Street. Here. Motion. We need a motion. Yes. Yes. yes I make the motion to accept this permit, if that's the proper language. To approve the curb cut. To yes. To approve curb cut permit 23-005. Exactly. Your motion. Yes. That's my motion. And I'll second that. That'd be, my, that'd be my motion. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. Aye. You, you have the, you have the folder you there as the actual have. curb cut permit, if you all would like to circulate that for signature. Oh, yeah, right here. Next item uh, that I have is discussion on town management in light of COVID-19. I was thinking that we could get this with that. Thank you, Gina, for putting together the, the statistics as you usually do. I was talking in last meeting or the one before about waiting until the federal government ends its state of emergency in May to take this off our agenda. But I'm thinking, you know, we just keep saying the same thing over and over, and that's not going to change in May. So I, I would suggest that uh, we put it on the agenda for next time. I'll try to put together some language for us to approve in terms of taking it off the agenda as a permanent item, and we can always bring it up again in May or June if, if we need to. How does that sound to you guys? Sounds great. great. Sounds good to me. Okay. I didn't think there'd be objections. Very good. Very good. Um. So that being said, I'd like to put the um, other business in now or on the banking question. Yes. So with the warrant, yeah. you have the regular expense warrant, which is the normal regular expense warrant, but you have a second warrant that has a check for $4.3 million to move the vast majority of the town money out of M&T and deposit it at Northfield Savings Bank. We received a call this morning from Lori Terrian, who is our representative with M&T, that an attempt was made to access the phone response system on M&T to gain access to our bank account over the weekend. It was either Friday or over the weekend. She wasn't sure exactly when. So um, the attempts to get to the town's money have increased. Um, they should be going, I mean, no one has gotten a dime from any attempt to write the multitude of fraud. I mean, Michelle has, I don't know how many reams of paper she's gone through at this point, printing out the fraudulent checks and ACH attempts that have been made on our account. But the fact that someone attempted this is very disturbing. Um, so, the fraud M and T fraud department contacted Lori, who then reached out to us because Lori was reaching out to us to say it may be time to set up a new account. I had already told Lori that we were looking to move banks, 
So um, finalize that discussion today to let her know that, yes, we have a dis in fact decided we would be moving over to Northfield. We're working on getting everything set up, which is why we hadn't reached out to her just yet. The account is set up. So we spoke with Northfield today. We decided that we really wanted to get the lion's share of the town's money out. We're leaving about $355,000 in M&T. Um, and Michelle is going to be, you know, we, we were already in process of working to do this. We were just trying to do this methodically. There's a lot to think about when you're changing banks and not rush. Doing what we're doing still gives us a little time, but I would feel much better knowing that $4.3 million is not in M&T and is sitting in another bank account and is no longer connected to that bank account anymore. She wants to approve this. So I have a second warrant with the largest check that probably the town has ever written um, to uh, move $4.3 million. Michelle will personally take that check to Northfield Savings Bank have, tomorrow. Do we have that in here? You have a second. You have in the, in the folders in front of you with the warrant. You have, I think, the one on front, the... No, right in front of you. Yep. I think that that's the warrant. The first one that's loose in front of that folder is the $4.3 million. Oh, yes. Yeah, really so it's big. literally just a check written to Northfield Savings yeah. Bank. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the check, but... It was so big that it wouldn't fit into the regular warrant. Yeah, I haven't seen an amount like this in a long time. Uh, so... There's a lot of interest in yeah, Michelle and I kind of laughed because uh, the it, it even it prints a little weird. And I said, I don't think Nemerick was set up to actually build uh, print Four numbers million. of this amount. So we need to just sign this. Yeah, you're. I'm just. Yeah, it's just. A, it's just like a normal warrant. It just happens to be a very unique check, which is why we did it on a separate okay. warrant as well. So, so we're doing warrants now. We're going to do this, this other one first, and we'll do this one. Yeah, that's fine. I have a question on the other warrant. Yes, it's a big one. Dog biscuits? Is that you? That's not. <laughs> oh, hey, you're the animal control officer. We give dog, dog biscuits, biscuits to doggies that come into the office. Oh, okay. I should probably help myself to some of those because I use them professionally. Oh yeah. 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 And you're good with coffee. <laughs> <laughs> use them professionally. Is this some kinky? <laughs> animal control officer. Oh. Uh, when you have a stray dog, dog biscuits are really, are you, really you? helpful. Yeah, I think it's. That's why I thought it was you. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. thought. Yeah. What do you have? For, what do you have for the yeah. stray cats? Uh, I found. I got a call the other. Well, it it came up incidentally in a dog call, but I got uh, somebody mentioned to me the other day that her cat was. She said fifty feet up in a black cherry tree with not a lot of branches down below. And I I told her I had a cat that went way up a tree and cats. I've, I've not seen them. They don't go down backwards the way you think that they might. They just turn. They, they try to run. Yeah, yes. they try to run right down, and my cat was not going to run down from that tree. And I just left her up there all day in the theory that I've never seen a cat skeleton in a tree. Yeah. But to a, it, when it got near sunset, I put a ladder up against the tree and went up and got her by the nape of the neck and held her out so here so she wouldn't claw me. But uh, this drop. woman said that <laughs> it, the cat was beyond ladder range for her. Yeah. So I don't know what would work. Yeah. In that case. Okay. All right, we're so we're signing Seth. So I guess there's no motion. Regular one, okay. Regular one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And I'll sign this one. Is that it on the uh, banking thing, Gina? Yes. The date we will keep working sure. through all okay, the pieces sure. and parts, but I will sleep much better tonight, knowing mm -hmm. that we're going to be getting this money out. Yeah. Great. Yeah. No, it's good. Michelle was literally shaking when she got that call today. Like wow. she came into my office to get me, and she was shaking. She was freaking out so about so much about it, and I calmed her down. But you know, but it is that is disturbing. So yes, right. And it's comforting that they do caught it. Yes. But Northfield. Do, do you think you'll have it? Um, oh. The bank transition done by the time tax taxes come in. We're going to work on that. Um, Michelle and I were talking through. She hadn't yet gotten into all those levels of details yet, but she needs to think through what all systems we need to try to change. And then my only concern there is I certainly do not want any hiccups. This The only thing that would affect or that would go into M&T is uh, anyone that paid online um, with their taxes. Any checks that, that are brought in at this point will be deposited to Northfield Savings Bank. Um so we're we're gonna work on that. And okay. Could you remind us, just so we have it in the front of our mind, 
why we think that uh, having the account at Northfield Savings Bank will greatly reduce these fraud attempts on our accounts. It's smaller. Bank. It's not going to reduce them today um, because the account with M&T is still open. Until that account is closed, mm -hmm. attempts will still be made. Right, on um, the M&T account, but why won't the NSB account uh, be It open? could happen in the future with Northfield Savings Bank. But the other one, but the Bank M&T has, has a bigger exposure because they're multi-state. I, I think they're, I personally think they're being targeted. I mean, the town was with People's Bank for years, never had an issue, had positive pay in place. It was never used. Um, it was never needed. And then we, this bank transition happened and suddenly this started yeah. within a month or two of that. So that means is that our account number is out there. On that's the, the thing. Account. As soon as your account number is out there, it's, it's fair game. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, anyone can type those numbers onto a fraudulent check and right. attempt to cash that fraudulent and check. And my thoughts with the transition going on from one bank to the next, not from us to North, but from M and T bank to was it people's? Yeah, was people's. That, um, it's a possibility that in the confusion they might be able to get some money. Maybe that's why they're targeting them. Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, and keep in mind, I mean, I've, I've heard that other towns have had this type of thing happen. If you don't have positive pay, those checks are getting cashed. So then you're in an even bigger scramble because yeah. now you have to close your account immediately. Yeah. Um, we have positive pay with M&T and had it with Peoples, which carried over to M&T, which is why none of these checks were actually cashed. We have positive pay as well with Northfield Savings Bank. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the difference is if it if it were to happen, we would have to cancel. We would close that account and start a new one with Northfield Savings, you know. Mm -hmm. But the hope is that once we close this account and stop this, then, you know, it, it will stop. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, attempts at committing fraud are just increasing in general. Our email... Carl knows I sent an email out to anyone with an East Montpelier account. We're getting emails. I get them more than anyone else. Here's your receipt for your payment. Thanks for your payment. Click on it. Um, I, there, I, last week, there was one when I, what prompted me to send that email was I got two in a row one morning. And I just wanted to make sure everyone knew not to open that. No, I'm not going to email you to ask you to buy a gift card. Many people received that one too from Gina. Um, so I've also reached out to RB Tech about cybersecurity. Um, I'm also attending a training at the Department of Public Safety in April on Great. cybersecurity. But um, RB Tech, does, there, there are some programs. It's just Ruben and I discussed a lot <laughs> about last week. Um, but there are some things that they can implement for us that will can put an additional layer over our email system to stop some of these things from getting in and to produce some checks that if people, if someone does click on something, that it checks it first before it takes you to the website. So <clears throat> unfortunately, this is just saying, I, my wife's dealing with the same thing at her company. They're getting the same, here's your receipt, emails. It's it's the same thing. Yeah. So they've just instituted a whole new thing on her email system as well. So it's just the world we're in today. Well, if you ever get okay. a Nigerian prince who wants to you know, give the town $5 million. And they've moved on well beyond <laughs> him now. <laughs> we could use the money. <laughs> Um, so that takes care of the banking issue. The thing, next thing on the agenda I see is the town administrative report. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So here I have the revised, the town meeting minutes. So John's looking at it now. So that's here for the select board to review and approve. Um, we had three new permits issued since the last meeting. I provided a report. I'm not sure how much detail you may want to go in on that. The biggest thing on here is to discuss the summer schedule um, and what the select board would like to do with the summer schedule. I know people can travel, so I've highlighted two dates in particular, July 3rd, um, which is the day before the Independence Day holiday. That could be an issue depending on people's travel schedules. And then Labor Day, which is September 4th. Um, those are the only two dates I called out that I wanted to mention, I don't know what everyone has on their schedule, and we don't necessarily have to solve this tonight, but just something you all can look at. And I'm sorry, what are the two days? There's July so 3rd. July 3rd, really, that's not the holiday, but it's the day before the holiday, so sometimes yeah. people travel. Oh, so we have, be, if, we have the parade in Montpelier. Yeah. It starts at 6. Yeah. So we go every year. Yeah. So, see? And then later I just wanted to comment on the May 1st um, meeting. Unfortunately, I cannot be here that day. I mean, I guess it's not that important. I can't zoom in either. 
nor can I be here on May 1st. Um, I don't know what we have going on at that meeting. It seems like we just talked about forming a committee for the ARPA funds. And when are we doing these member, select board member interview? That's, that's the next meeting, April 17th. That's what I thought. So I don't have to be there. I can't be there on the May 1st meeting. I just cannot do it. If you want to move the meeting day, that's fine. If you can, if we don't have that much that we have to discuss that meeting and I miss it, that's probably okay too. So we need a meeting though, right? Yeah, um, we, we generally have meetings twice a month so we can approve the warrants at, at a minimum. And yeah, we can just be in, in communication with you, Seth, and anything that really yeah. seems to need your presence, we can hold off on. Yeah, we can move it to the May 15th meeting. Yeah, yeah. And for, for July, I it, it would work well for me if it were the 10th and the 24th, because I will be out of town uh, on the 17th, and, in, until, the, until after the 17th. So I won't make the first meeting in July with it at the 10th and 24th, and but at least I, I can make one. I just eliminated the second meeting in my schedule, too, in July, so sorry about that. Well, maybe, maybe we may have done that in the past. We, we reduced our schedule a little bit during the summer. Oh, maybe. I don't think I did it intentionally, okay. but thanks for that. Okay. Planning Commission doesn't meet in August. Hmm? Planning Commission does not meet in August. <laughs> uh. So what are we saying for July? It looks like I, July 3rd is... Not a good idea. So yeah. July 10th and the 24th, would that, was, that, that was my suggestion. Would that be an option? Mm -hmm. That's an option. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll be six hours ahead time-wise, so I'm not going to zoom in on the 10th either. Good for you. No matter how entertaining it is. Okay. <laughs> so 10th and 24th for July. Um, and then September 4th isn't a good idea either. That should be moved. That's a good point. Yeah. I know historically sometimes you have canceled meetings during some of these time periods. Yeah. So if there's one you want to cancel now, I mean, we, you know, the schedule can always be tweaked as we go too. So, um, well, we could, we could do the 11th and 25th of September and yeah. avoid the labor day. And we can, we can, we can, Cancel the July 10th one, as far as I'm concerned. Up to you, I don't care. There's a lot of stuff going on in, right around that time yeah. period. Yeah. Yeah, I know I'm really busy. You usually do it's, cancel a couple right. in the summer. So, yeah. Why don't we just cancel we Target the 10th now? Yeah. And... We usually don't we usually have a, a sh very short meeting just to approve warrants? No, no, we've canceled. We've had one meeting a month on some yeah. summer, yeah, like July. Canceled. Previous schedules. I think that's where Seth would come in, and he will yeah. authorize the yeah. chair to do that. Yeah. 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 Okay. I cut off the debate. Hold <laughs> the question. <laughs> okay. So we want to change. Just have one meeting in July. You're saying? Yes. So okay. July twenty. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. So I think we've taken care of the meeting schedule. Anything else, Gina? No. Nope. Okay. So now I think um, we're all set except for personnel matters. Yes. Okay. So now we need to go into executive session, I believe. Motion to go into executive session. To discuss personnel matters, right? To discuss personnel matters. Yes. Uh, second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Good seeing you. Thanks, aye. Thanks, ben. Thanks, Thanks, Ben. Okay, Orca's back here in the room, Seth. Oh, very good. Oh, very okay, good. we're in our, our executive, executive session. Okay. No action taken. No action taken. And the time is uh, 8.28. 8.28. What's the next thing on the agenda? I can't hardly read it. I, 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 <laughs> I think it might have some, something to do with adjourning. I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn tonight's meeting. I will definitely second that. How's the select board? Just good. Notice that we're on time. We are. There you go. All the way from Florida. Yeah. Time difference in Florida. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so you made the you made the uh, motion to adjourn. We yes. Did.
We did vote on it. Somebody second it? Yep. Scott. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Safe travels. Safe travels home.